Welcome to The Valley Today, a public service presentation of the good folks at KAIL-TV. We journey to downtown Clovis to visit with the Chamber of Commerce, one of the strongest and nationally recognized for networking and leadership. Join us as we visit with Fran Blackney and Beth Bridges, spokespersons for the Clovis Chamber, up next on The Valley Today. And welcome to the Valley today at the Clovis Chamber of Commerce with Fran Blackney. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And you've been with this chamber for a good a good while, huh? Yeah, but, but I, I'm in my 12th year right yeah. now with it. Yeah, time, Excellent. time flies fast. Right? Give us a, a, a brief history of uh, the city of Clovis and, uh, and how the chamber relates to that. Well, um, we're not sure when the chamber really started. Uh, we think maybe around 1909 or so. Mm -hmm. And then the city of Clovis incorporated in 1912. And uh, we celebrated our centennial last year. It was a big, big to do here in the city. And over the years, uh, you know, we've moved around to different locations. This building here was a Carnegie Library that was built in 1914. Oh, no kidding. And in the mid-80s, it sat vacant when the new library was built on 5th Street, uh -huh. and the city was going to tear it down, and the chamber said, we'll buy it for a dollar if you'll let us remodel it and make it to a community hall, and the city made the deal, and so... That's where we're at so right now. So does this have historic status, this building? No, because it's been remodeled so many times. Oh, We've okay. tried to get it a stat So it, it's lost that. that originality, Absolutely. Huh? But you know what? That's fine. It's, it's a great place to work. And yeah. And when was uh, Clovis, uh, I know that it was incorporated 100 years ago, mm -hmm. but when, what were the, the very earliest beginnings of Clovis? Well, it started out, um, Clovis Cole was the, one of the original people mm -hmm. who were here, Marcus Pulaski, Pulaski Avenue here is named after. In the 1800s, uh, wheat farming was very popular in the area, and so that was the main commerce here going on. Mm -hmm. But then there was also a flue built from um, up in the mountains, I don't remember the name, Shaver Lake area. Shaver, yeah. yeah. And it's a long, it was the longest flue in the country, and those mm -hmm. logs floated down, I think, 50 miles here to Old Town over um, by Clovis Avenue and Shaw Avenue right. and that's where the lumber mill was. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of an exciting history. Yeah, and there are photos of, of parts of the flu uh, that were in town. Well, in the museum, there's yeah. a, a portion of the flu. Right. And so our museum's right down here on 4th Street. Yeah. So. And then it just started growing and, uh, you know, we had uh, the megapolis of Fresno next door and we right. were always a little seed town of cowboys and everything. Yeah. And uh, very we're independent and, and uh one of the turning points for us was the creation of the Clovis Unified School Districts by Doc Buchanan in the mm -hmm. 60s. And uh, he created our district, which is unique in that, you know, with the high standards, both academically and character wise, for the kids. And so that has created a city that has people who care about education. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter about, you know, wealth or whatever, people move here for the good education. And that really is one of the driving forces that made Clovis grow was uh, everybody wanted their kids to go to a Clovis school well, because absolutely. the schools are so good. We were being transferred to the valley and we're going, where are we going to move to? And I had no idea about the area, mm -hmm. but I said, I'll sleep in the streets to let our kids go yeah. to good schools. And, and compared to Fresno, you know, we ended up across the street in Clovis High School and, and we're very happy with it. So you bring those kind of people to town and and uh, so it starts growing. We have a very common sense city government. I mm -hmm. know we had our little kerfluffles back in the 80s well, and things I like think, that. I but think, every, every, I think that. every government does. But the city government is very business friendly. Just last week they announced they're cutting fees by 70% to attract new business to the yeah. area. So, uh, you know, that, that feeds on the Clovis Unified. And then, of course, mm -hmm. we handle the commerce end of it with with businesses but growth has really exploded in clovis anyway i remember when i started at kail in 1986 and this was a town of maybe 22,000, yeah, something no. like that and now what's the population now we're in bumping 2013? 100,000. yeah and so and in, in less than in less than 30 well about 30 years mm -hmm. you guys well 25 years you guys have really pushed i mean you've you've uh exponentially grown by four absolutely and again to show you how well it's run our infrastructure you know we have we're the only city with our own landfill by the way which they really i didn't done. know that I, I just learned that the other night wow. we 
uh, we're on the Economic Development Advisory Committee, so we mm -hmm. heard all the different departments talk. We have our new water and sewage treatment plants, mm -hmm. and our infrastructure can handle growth through 2050. And, and, and here's the thing, everyone goes, oh my goodness, it must be expensive. Well, garbage fees were uh, arose in 2004. They hadn't increased the fees uh, at all in 20 years. And that's, so, city, that's a city-run department? City-run, yeah. Because it used to be a private contractor, didn't it? Yeah, but it's run through the city. Well, they, they contract out part of, part of the thing. Anyway, it, so they raised our fees, and of course we were fighting against it. But, you know, they had to do it. They had to fix mm -hmm. the landfill. And our fees were going to go up 4% every year. And so uh, earlier this year, I asked the city manager, I said, when are our fees going to stop going up? He goes, oh, we stopped that three years ago. He says, we don't need to raise the fees anymore. In fact, they're giving a big discount if you use a smaller tote. So, so you're fiscally responsible. Absolutely. Uh, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, and the government has 14% uh, reserves in the yeah. budget. We're in the black. Good. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty proud of yeah. it. So. I remember going to Fresno State in the late 70s and, and Fresno and Clovis were just, you know, they were they were fields apart, literally, know, you know, yeah. separated by by uh, agriculture. Now you cross the street. And yeah. You're in now now it's all now it's all blended together. And another economic boom has been the new shopping center over on Herndon Avenue, which is doing above its budgeted sales mm -hmm. for the year. And what's happening is because of the increased business there. On Shaw Avenue, the vacant buildings are being filled. The old the vacant Vons has been vacant, I think, for 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's a new home of Burlington Coat Factory. Mm -hmm. And the Albertsons is a Walmart grocery store. There's a new True Value hardware store and a tire shop. So, you know, just thing, things are happening. And so Clovis really is business friendly. Yeah, it is, yeah. It is business friendly. And how so. is this new, uh, this new thing with uh, lowering the fees, uh, how, what's the reception been? Well, they just announced it last week. Right. So, so we haven't... You know, there haven't been any reaction to it that yeah. we're aware of. So, so, are you looking for any any business? Are you looking for industry? Uh, what what kind of business are whatever, you really? Well, there's already on the books um, over in, in Pelco where they have some vacant mm -hmm. buildings, uh, an automobile component place and an airplane uh, component. Um, building are going to hire about uh, 300 people between mm -hmm. the two of them. There's a call center for state disability going in on Herndon Avenue. So, you know, that kind of industry is coming. Of course, retail mm -hmm. is coming here also. So. And what's the plan for uh, 168 uh, pushing towards the uh, uh, southeast? Well, I w Everything kind or of no, I guess northeast. Yeah, everything kind of stalled with the recession, mm -hmm. and so they're just now talking about redoing it. And I mm -hmm. said we're on the economic development advisory committee, and there's they're starting to go over their plans on that. You know, de housing developers are starting to step up again. Yeah. So it's a gradual thing. One thing the city did in 2007, they saw the upcoming recession, mm -hmm. and so they started then to get concessions from the unions and just a few layoffs. So we wrote out this recession pretty mm -hmm. easily without major upsets everywhere. Right. In fact, in 2009, they tried to do a 1% sales tax hike and the chamber and one councilman fought it off and it lost big time. Yeah. Come to find out, we never would have needed it anyway. Right. So we, we came out just fine from the recession. You know, so. that's great that uh, yeah. you hear these stories because most, most cities are upside down. You know, they're, they're fretting over... Um, where the money's coming from, and you know they've already spent money that hasn't even been collected yet, and here you guys are, you've got a reserve and you're in the black. And you sit here going, why doesn't everyone do what we're doing with our schools, with the city government, but you know, every city has its own personality. Mm -hmm. so. so what are you looking at as far as growth? Uh, the city's at about 100,000 now, mm -hmm. right? Or, mm -hmm. or, or approaching 100,000. Uh -huh. Where, at what point are you gonna say, okay, that, that's enough growth? Oh, or I do you know. do that? Well, they, they have a general plan, which yeah. they develop every 10 years. And, and that's going it. to 2050? No, no, no. The infrastructure can handle growth through oh, 2050. Through okay. No, no. The, and they always are tweaking it. Our economic development mm -hmm. committee is going to tweak the economic development part of the general plan. So mm -hmm. we meet every two weeks. It's a citizens committee, and a wide variety of people are on it. And we hear from the different departments and give our ideas and our opinions of what to do about growth yeah. and things like that. You have a very dynamic <clears throat> chamber of commerce. You've got a lot of uh, participation from uh, you know the local business people. And, and it seems like they really enjoy themselves. 
sounds. Well, we make sure they do. Yeah. And, and of course, you're going to hear from our membership director, Beth Bridges, later mm -hmm. uh, about that. But uh, we're, we're very serious about our work, but we have a lot of fun, too. Yeah. We, we made the decision. Um, we can't do anything what's going on in Washington, right? I mean, except vote for our representative. So right. we And hopefully we vote for the right people. I know. That so, have backbone. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we are concentrating on, I tell people, take care of your family and your community, because those are the two things you have an impact right. on. And so spend your time doing something that you can affect. And so we have been concentrating our community, you know, by local and things like that. Mm -hmm. But one of our major focuses this year has been the upcoming generation. Um, we, every economic study talks about, you know, when we baby boomers retire, there's 78 million of us who are going to stop working in the next 10 years, mm -hmm. having enough skilled workers to replace us. And this is a major concern for every city in the country because um, having high skilled college grads and high skilled doesn't mean they can you know, run a computer. High skills includes critical thinking, communication skills. And you read these surveys from employers who are having a hard time finding qualified people who can do that yeah. so that's a major concern so perhaps you're educating kids and then they're not coming home to, to stay huh they're I, going out into the world and, and yeah, uh, you know making their mark in other communities yeah, well that's another whole issue too uh, you know the brain drain is a major concern for the valley we are orphaned in the state Sacramento is close to the Bay Area Bakersfield is close to LA and we're right smack dab in the middle mm -hmm. and uh, so but we've always had that problem absolutely yeah. but, but how do you it's a chicken and egg thing your college grads don't stay because there's not big companies big companies won't come because yeah. they're not college grads mm -hmm. and you know we do what we can to fix that but uh, back to the upcoming generation that's a focus for the chamber also on our board of directors we have conscientiously gone out and added new um, directors who are of the younger generation. Mm -hmm. So it, it, our discussions are a lot of fun because our ages range from 25 to 75 yeah. on our board. So it's always it's always There's a wealth of knowledge and there's a wealth of experience. Absolutely. Yeah, the experience yeah. especially. And, and then the opinions and attitudes of the younger generation versus us older, older people and everything mm -hmm. is really interesting. But they all agree 100% that being a small business owner is getting to be really hard. Yeah, yeah so. it is. And also, uh, the uh, the baby boomers are, are, are retiring out, and mm -hmm. there's nobody, uh, what you had mentioned earlier, there's nobody coming up uh, behind them. Not enough. Not enough. High-skilled yeah. workers. And, and well, but people that actually want to take a business over or start a new business. Uh -huh. Yeah, most of, a lot of people just want to go to work for somebody and not have the headache of... Uh, of all all that goes with owning a business, but I mean the uh, the. Uh... Well, if you consider, um, twenty five hundred bills were proposed up in Sacramento this year. Twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. and I always say there is no such thing as a good business bill unless it's undoing a bad one. Yeah. In other words, you can't regulate positive for a business. Mm -hmm. And Jerry Brown just signed eight hundred mm -hmm. of them. Now, I have to say the really egregious ones were kicked out, which is good. And that's right. why we don't get all upset when we see some of these bills because as they work their way through, common sense comes around. But I go, who would have thought of that? You know, but it does stifle business oh, when you have all regular? these onerous regulations that you can't, uh, you can't uh, face. Well, we tell our members there are lawbreakers every day, and they yeah. don't even know it. Right. Because there's so many laws well, and Well, there's sins of omission <laughs> and there's sins of commission. I know. So, <laughs> so but, but, you know, we do the best we can yeah. and, and, and support them. And God bless our, our members and our small business yeah. owners. I call our small business, business owners our economic heroes right. of the country. Because you realize about 90% of people work for small business. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you're really going after uh, high school kids, high school age kids, as bet. far as uh, getting them to uh, maybe uh, come up with an idea to start a business? Good segue, because yeah. that's my next thing. You don't have much time, though. I know. So. We're presenting the Young Entrepreneurs Academy to yeah. local, middle, and high school kids who have a passion to start their own business. And we're really flattered because uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce chose the Clovis Chamber to be the first in California to present this to our kids. And this program's been around since 2004. Mm -hmm. So we are out there uh, getting our kids to apply, and uh, we're going to take them on a 30-week journey. And at the end, they will have their own real business that will even 
have an investors invest in it if they go before the panel and sell their business like on Shark Tank. So we're so you've been, about you've it. been in the community and uh, and been uh, interacting with these kids. Mm -hmm. How has it been received? Well, we know there's not a lot that want to open their own business. I yeah. mean, that's so we've been to the different high schools and we get six or eight kids because we only want the ones who really, really are passionate and who will come every Tuesday mm -hmm. for three hours in the evening for the classes. So, uh, you know, we, we have a maximum 24. That's it. And we're going to go on field trips. We're going to go to the Save Mart Center and see how it runs. We're going to have people talk to them, attorney, tax accountant, e-commerce. The media is going to come talk to them about how to speak with the media. And, uh, and one will be chosen to go to New York and compete for college scholarship. Great. But all of them will have their own business yeah. and will have those marketable skills of critical thinking and communication. So uh, we're just thrilled to do it. It's a lot of work, but worth every every yeah. second. Fran Blackney, we're out of time on this segment. Of course. <laughs> Today. Uh, thanks for Thank being you. on our show. You are a membership uh, coordinator for Clovis Chamber. Membership director. All right. And that's my official title. Yeah. And then my unofficial title, which I gave to myself several years ago, is Chief Networking Officer. All right. CFO. CFO. CNO. I, I, I always wanted to be a C-level you know, yeah. executive. So. Now, how long have you been with the uh, chamber? Been with the Clovis Chamber for 10 and a half years. Wow, so quite a while. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I've really noticed that things have changed here in Clovis. The attitude is a lot better towards business. So a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of your focus now is getting businesses in, keeping them, keeping their doors open and uh, getting them a business that will uh, make them successful. My focus as the membership director is, is twofold. One is to find the companies and the people and the businesses who need to be a part of the chamber, mm -hmm. who are looking for an opportunity to build their business, who, who need an easier, more simple way to promote and market and network. Mm -hmm. And then as the chief networking officer, I'm really in charge of making sure that we have the kind of networking events that are very accessible, that are very effective, that are very efficient for our members and for just the members of the community who want to participate in that. Yeah. And so where was it at when you started here 10 years ago? Uh, how, well, what did it look like then? Yeah, I think we had a pretty good networking program because we've, we've had for many, many years members of the community and business members of the community who are very active, who've, who've led a lot of that level of activity. Mm -hmm. When I came on board though, one of the things that I wanted to do that I'd spoken with the CEO at that time about was making the Clovis Chamber a center and a leader for networking, not just for the city of Clovis, but right. for the valley, for the, the whole area. We wanted the Clovis Chamber to be the place for small businesses and even large businesses to network. So it's family now. It's really more of a familial thing, right? I mean, you have this really nice relationship between uh, the chamber and between the private business. Oh, well, absolutely. That's what a chamber of commerce is all about. Right. Is well, we being that, that place. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Being yeah. that place for private business, mm -hmm. and, and even even the members of the city government and and those who are active in the economic development department and, and Old Town Clovis, they need to participate, and they do participate as well. Yeah, and this is really ch you know Clovis back in 1986 when I started working at KAIL, Clovis was a little you know 22,000 yeah. uh, strong population, and it's it's. Uh, it's really grown. Is in the last just 10 to 13 years, Clovis has grown incredibly yeah. still. About 70,000 people in 2000, and now we're close to 100,000 people. That is just immense. It is just It really growth. is. But it's, it's uh, focused on education. It's focused on helping private business. And uh, on what else? On having organizations that are very involved. Yeah. Because businesses want to be involved in the community. They want to show their support for the community. They want to invest in not only their business, but their community as a whole, because yeah. it, it's the community that supports the businesses. And it was interesting talking to Fran. She said even in when the, the economy was crashing in 2007, the, the city of Clovis was still in the black because they had the foresight to realize that hey we've got to do something now and we've got to you know we've got to protect what we've already started. They did a very very good job of thinking ahead about that and and staying on top of that growth. I can't mm -hmm. imagine what it's like to have your city or or what you're in charge of just grow tremendously like that. Yeah. And they have done a very yeah. very good job. Well, let's move over here to the chamber sign. 
Uh, so what's in the future for, uh, for the uh, city of Clovis? I mean, you're, at, 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 you're approaching 100,000 population now, so that's good for business because, uh, you know, the more people, the better for business. So for the chamber, we really need to stay on top of technology. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we've done that is by using social media. Mm -hmm. We launched a Chamber Facebook page, a Chamber Twitter page about three or four years ago. And you know, in social media, uh, it's like dog years, you know, yeah. one year's worth about seven years in, in real life. And making sure that we were on the front of that for two reasons. One is because it's a tremendous marketing tool mm -hmm. for us. And the other reason is that if we spend time and effort learning how to make social media work, then we can share that knowledge and information with our members. Anytime they have to spend less time and effort learning about a new marketing or promotional tool, is time they can spend building their businesses. Has that been hard with uh, the baby boomer, boomers who are, uh, you know, some of the business owners, uh, people that are my age or, or older, you know, that are getting ready to maybe retire out uh, two or three or five years down the road? One of the largest growing groups on Facebook is that boomer age population. Really? Yes. And so it's still growing tremendously and it is a, an excellent mm -hmm. business and even personal branding tool because it is so huge now. And I know people who are on it only because they're it's the best way they get pictures yeah. of their grandchildren, but then they start seeing how that can benefit their personal branding. They see how that can benefit their, their business branding. And so we help them by shortcuts and examples and sharing knowledge and information on you it. You are a big believer in networking and I know yeah. you're in your hot little pause yeah. there, you've got <laughs> this book, Networking on Purpose. Look at that right there. And, and that's you there, Beth Bridges on the cover. Tell us about this book. So when I started with the chamber and, and we still don't have uh, a huge marketing or advertising budget, just like most of our member businesses, right. if you're a small business, you don't have a huge mm -hmm. advertising or marketing budget. And one of the best tools you have is networking. Mm -hmm. So I started using that to promote the chamber and <laughs> added it up. And in the last 10 and a half years, I've been to over 2,500 networking events. Wow. And I started thinking that there, there has to be a pattern, there has to be a system, there has to be a strategy, because at first I was just doing things and, mm -hmm. and it seemed to be working, but I realized that it needed to be a lot more purposeful. Mm -hmm. Started blogging a little bit, started writing articles, started thinking, how can I learn what I'm doing? Because I was doing it, but I couldn't tell you quite exactly right. what I was doing so that I can explain it to other people so that they can use very specific, very deliberate and intentional strategies. And that's why the title is Networking on Purpose, on purpose. Staying with Your Purpose, right. and making sure that our small business members, and now of course this will be great for anybody who's a member of a chamber of commerce right. or not. Or, or anybody that's got a business and yeah, wants absolutely. to improve their uh, their business. It'll make it very, yeah. very simple, very strategic for them. Is this available at uh, at the Common Bookstore? Or? So it is going to be available on Amazon.com okay. starting October 25th. Okay, so it hasn't quite been uh, released yet? It may be released, <laughs> but October 25th is our official launch date mm -hmm. on Amazon.com. And of course, I'm gonna go to our local bookstores, A Book Barn, which mm -hmm. is right down here in Old Town Clovis, and they will have it as well. Yeah. Well, how exciting that you have a book that uh, really lays it all out for people to uh, be able to uh, network and you know, improve their business model. And to support Chambers of Commerce, because I think it's page 64. There's about a page and a half here on why you should <laughs> join Chambers of Commerce, because they're a fantastic opportunity. Now, it seems like you could have transplanted yourself anywhere in the United States. You seem bright, you seem energetic, you seem uh, like you really know what you're doing. Why did you choose My Clovis? whole family is here. Look right there. My mother was born in that building. Okay. In the, and, in the corner two story? Yes, in the corner two story. Back in the day, it, it's been many, many things, but one of the things it has been was a doctor's office. And there were yeah. about 600 babies delivered right here in Clovis. My mother, Peg Boss, 
who was the first yeah. woman mayor of Clovis. She was born right there. I'll be and she has me beat because I, I literally work half a block from where my mother was born, but Peg Boss, you know, yeah. runs the Dry Creek Museum. Mm -hmm. And she works across the street from where she was born. You have the the dynamics and the economy of a good sized city with those deep, deep family roots, not just for me. Yeah. My grandmother lives half a mile away. I had to ask that question. <laughs> I figured you were a local girl, but yes. you know, I, I also thought that, you know, you could probably be anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the world with, uh, with your intelligence and your, and your drive. Well, a little secret. So my entire family and by entire family, I mean my mom, my dad, my aunts, my uncles, my first cousins, my first cousins once removed, my nieces <laughs> and nephews, every one of them has graduated or is in the process of graduating from a Clovis school. I am the only one in my family who didn't. So, so I had to come work for the Clovis Chamber of Commerce to, to work that off yeah. <laughs> and, and to make up for having missed out on, on the whole Clovis Unified uh, School District experience. So for a business that's not that a business that's in Clovis, that's not in the Chamber of Commerce, it's easy to get a hold of you, but what's, uh, what is it, uh, ClovisChamberOfCommerce.com? So ClovisChamber.com, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. very, very easy. You can go to the website, you can see what membership involves, and it, it can be as simple as, if you wanna just join and have the plaque in your office to show people that you've made an investment in the community, that you've made an investment in your business, you're welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to participate in a deeper way by networking, by taking advantage of the marketing, of the promotion, it, it just builds your business mm -hmm. faster. And Clovis has done a lot of things, right? You know, the uh, street fairs that you have, my older brother, he loves coming to these. He just will not shut up yeah. about them. But uh, you know they're wonderful. You get to you get to visit. You get to see uh, all these neat things that Clovis really is, yeah. is stands. Big Hat you know? Days is nationally known mm -hmm. and has really been one of the ways that has put Clovis and the Clovis Chamber on the map. Yeah, we're nationally recognized for our social media program. Mm -hmm. We've been ranked in the top 100 most social media friendly chambers of commerce. We were number 43, right behind Atlanta, Georgia, and right ahead of Stockton.